Hello, this is Dr. Liu at Lee Time. When you are making your hydrosulfide distillation, have you worried about when should I stop? In today's video, I will present you my two days achievements. I spent a whole day to do the experiments and editing the video to present it. Hopefully you find an answer through today's video. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this channel talk about herbs, benefits and uses, and how to efficiently extract them. In today's video, talk about the two-day experiments to help understand how to make the best quality hydrosol and when to stop it. Hopefully, this can help your distillation. And I need your support to reach my goal of 5,000 subscribers. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. And thank you very much. So when we are making hydrosol, we want to make the best quality hydrosol. This brings most benefits to our health and skin care. Hydrosol contains the chemicals, the fetal chemicals extracted from the herbs. And those chemicals go into the water the best means we have the highest content or the best quality of those phytochemicals. In lab, they normally use HPRC MS, that is a separation by using the HPRC and use a mass spectrum to measure, especially a marker chemical, for example, the linalu from a lavender hydrosol. Use that to, as a benchmark to make sure each batch has the same concentration of these marker chemicals. Home or in the workshop, we may not have the ability to send a sample to the lab for the testing. Today, I'm presenting you an experiment doing a semi-quantify of the chemical, the fetal chemicals existing in the hydrosol. I'm using the lavender as an example because lavender has the higher the essential oil content and from the dry lavender buds we can make uh, the cloudy hydrosol. This is perfect for our experiment. We're using a uh, lavender fresh leaves so you may not see that many cloudy. You can use your nose, your instinct to tell aroma change. That is another factor we can use. But in today's video I'm using the turbidity to check in the change of the extraction with distillation time.
It is almost clear, so I stopped the distillation. And now I'm going to do the test, a simple test, try to quantify the difference from the beginning all the way to this bottle. Let's check it out. So now I'm going to test the, the called turbidity, the technical term that means uh, how clear the water is. I made this a little uh, background for easy uh, compare. So what I'm going to do is I use the same the beaker for all of these 11 samples I took. I just uh, poured in and I show you how the difference between the the stripe uh, behind the bottle and compare with uh, what it was. Now the second one. So after collecting all the 12 samples and put it in front of those uh, stripe uh, pattern and we can clearly see the turbidity change with the distillation time. When the hydrosol collected uh, over 500 milliliter, they're getting uh, clear and uh, you see the stripes uh, become uh, more visible compared with the previous the samples. So that's why I normally recommend to make a uh, two cup of hydrosol from a one batch of a distillation with a KD5. That's a around a one to one ratio for most of the herbs. But uh, there are some exceptionals when you are using the high condensed material like a bark root, you can have a more the high quality uh, hydrosol produced. And you can follow the same theory using the turbidity or using your nose to figure out the aroma change. So using the same approach, taking samples with time and then you compare them one to one and tell the difference. Okay, thank you for watching today's video. Hopefully you learned something. And please like the video, subscribe the channel. My setting goal is 5,000 subscribers. Uh, please help me to reach the goal. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.